the Bhagavad Gita mm. is one of the greatest philosophical, spiritual doctrines from ancient times. Mm. It was delivered by Sri Krishna in a chariot driven by Arjuna. Mm. And it would be rather like that chariot arriving and being spotted, being filmed, being noted uh, as the Bhagavad Gita was being delivered. And the only interest of the government and the population of Earth was the nature of the chariot. Yes, that is exactly what is going on. <laughs> That's, That's where exactly. we're at, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. The Spiritual Freedom Show with Richard Lawrence where politics is not the answer, materialism counts for nothing, and spirituality will set you free. Okay, Richard. Darren. Big show today, big news, I think. Big news over in America, UFO news, that is. Yeah. Um, uh, we've just had the House Oversight Committee who's um, held this open hearing with three witnesses to come forward to yeah. testify, to talk about UFOs. And I think the big question that we all went into this hearing with was, are they finally going to reveal that they have evidence of extraterrestrial life? I think that was yep. you know, a yep. big question for us. And I think now, I'll just preface this by saying that, um, you know, you are someone who has literally been campaigning on this issue for over 40 years, probably the longest in Britain, as far as anyone I know. As far as I know. <laughs> and uh, I think there are a few, if any, position who are, people who are in a better position to be talking and commenting on these issues right now. So I thought I'd start with, why is this so significant, what's happening at this moment? Well... You mentioned Britain, and mm. uh, I've got to say, Britain needs to stand up. I mean, before we get into all that, this mm. is going on in America. Mm. You've got congressmen and women seemingly very open-minded from both parties, Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, very engaged, I'd say. Very engaged, very open, willing to look at the truth, whatever it is. Some coming right out and saying, look, you know... There was a, a UFO landed in, in the times of Ezekiel. I mean, they, they, you know, they made these statements not during the hearing. Mm. They're very open. Never mind now. There's been a cover up and so on. They're very explicit about that. Would that we had MPs in Britain of that caliber totally. on this topic. Totally. Uh, that's what we need. And we're lagging behind. It's actually quite pathetic. So I'm making a call on the spiritual freedom show because it's freedom that we really believe in to give us the knowledge, give us the truth that you've got. We know for a fact that the British government, part of the five eyes, as they're called, oh, which yeah. is New Zealand, Australia, Canada, America, Britain, were, were in consultations on this topic. I believe it was in May of this year. They share information on UFOs, or as they like to call them now, UAPs, but no one's really getting behind that no, other than no, no. officialdom. I mean, they're yeah. UFOs to most people. Yeah. Um, and come on, Britain. Make a stand, come on government, tell us the truth. I mean, there must be absolutely no question that they have information to share. I mean, Absolutely, beyond any doubt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the person that often commentates on this, someone I spoke to on his first day in the Ministry of Defence is Nick Pope, former um, member of the Ministry of Defence, former uh, organiser of that department, the UFO department there. But, you know, he was part of that cover-up. I'm not blaming him for that. He had, mm. That was his job. But he was. Um, I was campaigning before that, since that, and way before I was, Dr. George King and the Aetherius Society were. And here we have this cosmic voice, 1958, published, flying saucers are real, flying saucers are friendly, flying saucers are extraterrestrial, your government knows this. And that's what really happened this week. So now let me come to your questions mm -hmm. about the hearing. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to come back to that point, I mean, this is a total vindication of that, what, what's been printed in 1958, isn't it? It is. I mean, the, the, the one element of that that is still being debated is that, well, are they friendly? Right. But the fact that they're real, actually, that was really admitted two years ago, effectively, in America, mm. but not necessarily anywhere else. And mm. Canada, I think, has been pretty good on this. There's definitely programs going on, we're told, both in Russia and China of the same nature. Various individuals, prominent individuals, have come out uh, and, and said... In those countries? You mean? No, in various countries oh, yeah. okay. have come out and revealed uh, certain things now, which would never have been real, revealed before. Mm. Uh, but this, I mean, in, actually, uh, on August the 23rd, 1958, that's 65 years ago this August, and just in a few weeks' time, mm. we'll be marking yeah. that day. Wow. Um, Dr. King arranged a rally in Trafalgar Square for the government to reveal the truth about UFOs or flying saucers, as they were then called. 
Wow. So it's yeah. So it's vindication for Theory Society for Dr. King and for you even having yeah. come handling this for forty years. Yeah. But going through these points, that yeah. it was admitted they're real. Yeah. I would say this week it came out clearly in the Congress hearing that they are extra. Or some of them are extraterrestrial, yeah. and that's a big, big thing. That was what we were all waiting to see, and I think that was made clear by the very credible witnesses and their interaction with the congressmen and women. Yeah. Um, your government knows this absolutely. I mean, they don't even deny that now. They have lied. It's, it's freely acknowledged there's been a, a definite syndicated program mm -hmm. of disinformation on this topic for decades. Are they friendly? Well, it was prophesied in another issue of Cosmic Voice, oh, yeah. actually the one before this one, uh, but published uh, in a transmission called Demand the Truth. And I think that really set the ball rolling. And that came from Mars Sector 6, who delivered... The Nine Freedoms. It's all coming together, folks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in that, uh, Mars X6 made a very, very interesting prophecy. And of course, this was the editorial. Dr. King published this transmission as the editorial of that cosmic voice. Mm -hmm. And he warned, and he said, when they admit these craft exist and we're extraterrestrial, this isn't the exact wording, but mm -hmm. when they admit this, they will then try to make out they're not friendly. And that's happened. There is that narrative just days before this yeah. hearing. The head of an organization called the AARO, got to remember that all domain um, anomalous. anomalous resolution office, yeah. which is basically a UFO <laughs> investigation department <laughs> yeah. in the Pentagon, uh, Sean yeah. Kirkpatrick by name, was, was actually said that he had sleepless nights worrying about extraterrestrial incursions or invasions yeah. or some yeah. word like that. Yeah. So they've started putting that program out just as was prophesied by Mars Sector 6 in 1958. And it's all mixed up with uh, national defense, national security as well, isn't it? I mean, the fact that the Pentagon is, it seems to be running what appears to be a lot of these secret programs that are now coming out. And the fact that you know, elected officials are not party to any of these, um, that they're trying to withhold the information from being even shared with elected officials, let alone us. I mean, well, that's a very, yeah. very sinister mm. part of the whole hearing, actually, which seemed to be acknowledged both by the congressmen and women and, and the witnesses. I agree, yeah. That the military is running the government, not the government is running the military on yeah. UFOs. Mm. And this is something you associate with a fascist dictatorship, usually when there's a military junta or something running the government. Um, you don't think of this in democracies. It could easily be true in Britain as well. And something that Dot King used to refer to, and we had transmissions, one notable one from Mars Sector 8 through Dr. King, about the silence group. Mm. And it's had various names. I think in Donald Trump and others have referred to deep state. Yeah. As yeah. president, More common he felt there yeah, was yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. And you can see, I mean, I think we overestimate sometimes the role, the knowledge of presidents, prime ministers, um, and, and we've talked about that before, mm. but it became very clear at the hearing this is not being run by the... In fact, some of the congressmen and women were told, well, sorry, by, the, by Pentagon officials, your security clearance isn't high enough for us to tell you anything. Mm. We can't tell you, the elective representatives, anything, because we don't choose to do so. We don't accept your credentials. Yeah, and just think, I mean, it makes me question, like, when did we become so disenfranchised by our own government? Yeah. It's just sort of like, it's just happened. And, and this issue, I think, really brings it to the fore. I mean, I mean this yeah. is the issue that we really want to talk about today, isn't yeah. it? I mean, but on, but on UFOs, I think going back to your point about this call for the British government to finally come forward and share what they know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's almost they're, they're standing out by this, you know, by being silent. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like distinctive, isn't it? It's like, why are you yeah. so quiet on this issue? Yeah. And another thing that, that lots of people are talking about is the claim made by one of the very credible witnesses, David Grush by name, mm. uh, former intelligence officer, for, former a Air Force officer, mm. um, and who was running the actual UFO program at one point. Yeah. Um, and he yeah. said that they have retrieved craft. Um, and also that it had been registered, there was what he called, I think, biologics on yeah. it. Yeah. Now, is that possible? Um, one of the, actually, it was an interesting question raised by uh, one of the um, representatives, which is if they're so, such fantastic technology, and they sure. do, mm -hmm. how would they, why would, how could they crash? The answer to which is if they were allowed to crash. I mean, mm. they say they want nuts and bolts proof. Maybe they've been given some. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, they haven't completely crashed. And 
The biologics, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that in my, I could be wrong here, but I would say that if there are any uh, apparent beings that have in these retrieved craft that they've found, uh, they would be robots, even if they don't appear to us to be robots, even if they're so sophisticated, they have all the traits as far as we're mm. concerned of being biological. Um, that's what I would think, but that's just an opinion of mine. Yeah, so basically what we're saying is that he is sharing that there has been this program going on. I think he said since 1933 was the first one that um, they yeah, retrieved. Yeah, the first uh, one that he knows of that he and knows that he of, revealed, yeah. which was in Italy in the Mussolini time, that they kept in some kind of Air Force base in Italy. And then when it, the, you know, the war was lost by the Italians, by Mussolini, mm. then the Pope, it's amazing the Pope would get involved. <laughs> yeah, of all the people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pope Pius <laughs> XII, I yeah. think, yeah. then notified the Americans and then it was retrieved and taken to America. That's what one of the whistleblowers, as I say, highly, all the people, all the three of them were highly credible, totally. highly qualified, trusted. One was a commander in the US Navy um, who, who had you know, great experience of, of piloting and so forth and made it absolutely clear that these craft uh, have a something beyond physics as we know it, mm. I think was, was his phrase. Yeah. So coming back to Grouch for a moment, because I thought, yeah. yeah, I thought his comments were really, really eye-opening, I think, mm. um, just particularly to see the reaction even of the of those Congress people in the room, you know, mm. and the questions they were asking him, and how many questions he was not really able to answer fully. That's true. All. That yeah. kept coming up. Kept yeah, coming I need up. to see you in secrecy. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's always, there's something more there, isn't there? That's an open secret, you yeah, might say. Yeah, yeah, it's an open secret, yeah. exactly. But he did make what, so you've talked about, you know, the fact that they have this crash retrieval program, and I think he even described it as a reverse engineering that they might He said that was right. going on. Yeah. yeah. Then with a, what he called these kind of coldly, actually, these non-human biologics, which, mm. which, we're, which we're proposing might even be remote, like robots. Just Could be. They more just, sophisticated. We can't robots. conceive of ro yeah. robots like that. Yeah. Um, that's a, an opinion only. Mm. That's if they're there. He hasn't actually seen any of those, he said. When he was asked whether he'd True. seen the craft, yeah. he wouldn't answer, yeah. which implies that he has. Yeah. When he was asked if he'd seen the biologics, as they call mm. them, he said I, he hadn't, yeah. but he'd heard about them. Yeah. So... Well, one thing we I think know. is interesting about that is that it sort of kind of confuses the story a little bit, isn't it? Because then people kind of think, oh, well, those must be the, the beings who are responsible for these craft. As in, those are the ones who might contact us, who might come to us. But, but in, I mean, as far as we're concerned, that's, that's not really the case. Maybe we can add a little bit more to that yeah, story. Yeah, I mean, what we have in this solar system, as we understand in the Ethereum Society, and you won't get better information on this anywhere else. The, the beings in this solar system, if you want to know about them, and they are the main ones concerned with us, totally. and they don't really need, with all due respect, assistance from any other solar system to take care of, the, of the, this solar system and a backward planet like Earth and the people mm. on it. And that's what they're doing. So they would control and know um, any kind of alien craft that's coming in to the solar system. And as I mentioned earlier, they might, in, under certain conditions, either have a forced crash or allow a crash to take place, which they knew mm. uh, was within the confines of karma, to just mm. put a, a loose phrase on it. And that gives then, that would then give, and we don't know this, this is just based on the David Grush evidence yeah, here, sure. actual physical evidence, which is what they say they want. Mm. And as you mentioned there, reverse engineering too. Yeah. There's one other element of, of Grush's testimony where he mentioned, I think at some point, um, you know, comments about multidimensional life. Well, that's what I really, life. I think that that's not been picked up as far as I know much I haven't by seen it commentators. Much at all. Or anywhere, actually. No. Yeah. Uh, and it was a very short section when he talked about quasi dimensional beings. He mentioned, I think, interdimensional existence. Mm. And he gave the image, actually, interestingly, of. He used holographic yeah. as a term yeah. and gave the, the, the image of a person and their reflection and how a, uh, an interdimensional being could come down to a lower dimension. Right. These things we just touched on as a theory, but there you have the nub of life in this solar system right there. Uh, I don't suppose he realizes that, no, but yeah. that's, of course, exactly how they operate. This is why so many UFOs by ordinary witnesses, and let's remember, none of this are public cases. This is all military. And one of the uh, witnesses, um, 
Ryan Graves, mm. very experienced pilot, he said in his opinion, only about 5% of the cases that his colleagues are experiencing, they actually report wow. because it can do so much damage to their careers. Wow. And people have even, according to these witnesses, been harmed mm. or injured. Yeah, personally, isn't it? Yeah, personally, physically harmed. Uh, yeah. When they've tried to, to, yeah. to pursue this or report this. Mm. Well, just coming, coming back to that point, I think it's it, what he revealed, I think, to me was that there is a well-established theoretical framework in general relativity, in quantum physics, Thank for you. the fact yeah, that these UFOs right. do blink in and out. And it's yeah. sort of like, okay, he's not necessarily saying it, but he's saying that the framework is there theoretically. That's right. Yeah. And so we, we're moving into the fascinating realms of so-called dark matter, dark mm. energy. Mm. Um, you know, dark matter is something they don't know what it is. They admit mm. they don't know what it is. Mm. They just know it's there. We know that 5% of the matter um, of the universe only is visible, detectable. So there's this whole area of exploration. Um, I, I think, again, a lot of knowledge could be gleaned from the Ethereum Society and our, our concept of, of higher realms, of higher frequencies. And this is to understand, this is why a spacecraft can blink in, blink out, so-called, of, ex of existence, then reappear, because right. they have a cr control over the, the dimensions, if mm. you like, of life, and they can exist on any frequency they choose. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's basically w what I kind of gleaned there, and also just reading more widely, is that there is the beginning, certainly, of a scientific foundation for so many things that we have been talking about for so mm -hmm. many years. And yeah. I think, yeah, the most, g coming back to my point about people kind of getting getting the, the wrong end of the stick with these non-human biologics that they claim to have found in there. I mean, mm -hmm. that's not at all what we're talking about in terms of extraterrestrial life in our solar system. No, no. And, and as he hints here, we're really talking about life existing on higher realms of existence, yeah. millions of years, perhaps more advanced than us in terms of consciousness, who are helping us in, in small ways, perhaps even responsible for for allowing these craft to crash and giving the nuts and bolts proof that you're talking about here yeah. so that sort of the awakening of humanity can be accelerated. And when you further. think that, you know, they, assuming it's true and they have craft mm. that, are, that they've retrieved, right, right. they haven't told us. It's taken a whistleblower who says he's been injured and I think he said his family to, or his wife to... Give that impression, yeah. Yeah, um, as a result of his mm. coming openly. Um, you know, what chance, I mean, the, the beings from other planets, they've given this information to governments and it hasn't been shared. Mm. So I come back to the point, 5%, according to one witness, of the actual military experiences are being reported only. It's another 95% that aren't. But the public experiences, possibly people watching this show right now, Absolutely. aren't being shared, followed, used at all. At all. And in coming back to Britain... They've closed their UFO department. <laughs> they they okay. introduced the Freedom of Information Act, I think, in the Tony Blair government. All right. And they had more requests at one point for freedom of information on UFOs than any other topic. Really? I heard at one point that the top four requests were all UFO related. Wow. And this went on, and they found, so they claim, it very difficult to manage it all. And then they just closed it based quoting sort of lack of funds. So they don't even have the pretense of a department. Wow. Uh, whereas it, they're lagging so far behind, it's an utter total disgrace. Mm. And, and I'm, I'm sure not true, because if they're sharing UFO information with, with the, the Americans, Americans yeah, yeah. Well, they Who's must doing have... Who's yeah, The janitor? I mean, that. come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. No, I think and it goes back to this more sinister element that you're talking about, doesn't it? Because why does it take a whistleblower to come forward? Not even an agent of the government. He's not even yeah. acting in an official capacity. Yeah. He's being threatened by the official capacity to, yeah. to suppress the truth that he has come forward to share. And he's shared it at Grace Worcester himself, apparently, as he describes. Yeah. And, and I think, as he said, he's representing many other people who uh, and colleagues who support him, who have either not been able to come forth themselves or haven't been willing to uh, risk their own career in the same way, which yeah. no doubt he has. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you know, it's like, yes, there is truth kind of trickling out from yeah. some, you know, if his claims are true, brave people who've been willing to stand up and tell the truth. But this is not even really the government coming forth at this stage, no. is it? And if you go yeah. back to this era, the yeah. 50s, um, you've got absolute evidence that came out under the Public Record Act, which is like th 30 years after it happened, mm. that Winston Churchill was deceived mm. by his so-called science advisor and by, I think, someone in the Admiralty, basically told us nothing in this flight. He asked the question and was fobbed off 
That, and he was prime minister who just sort of led us through a war, yeah. and he wasn't told the truth. And then you have another establishment figure, um, Sir Peter Horsley, who became Air Marshal Number Two in the Ministry of Defence, had his finger on the nuclear button, mm. who was equerry to Prince Philip, who believes, believed, he's passed on now, he met an alien in 1954, and in fact revealed the story to me uh, in 1997 after he retired. So again, see, he didn't let I it see, damage his I career. See, I see, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so he told you that? He, he told said, me himself. Yeah, he'd wow. retired by then. He went to the Bahamas or Bermuda, one of those two. Yeah. And I spoke to him from there on wow. the phone. Wow. And actually, um, we got the story because it's such a good story for the tabloid media, you know, aliens <laughs> and royalty. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, That's like the, the, it was like on the front page of the Sun. That, they, and, yeah. But, you know, he was a very credible person. He was taken seriously on everything. As I say, he was number two in the air ministry, an air mm. marshal, knighted, had his finger on the nuclear button. He's one of the people who did. Mm. And then he reveals this story and it was almost ignored. Yeah, wow. Uh, coming back to these two guys, um, so those two former naval pilots, Graves and Fravor, who also testified. Yeah. I think, you know, come back to one of your points, I mean, I think one of the congressmen described, you know, Fravor's certainly credentials as gold-plated. I mean, this is no jarhead. Oh, I mean, no. He, he's no, an extremely no. experienced and expert yeah. professional in this field, mm -hmm. right? And um, do you want to tell a little bit about what they shared? Well, in his case, of course, he, he made it clear that he wasn't interested particularly in UFOs mm. himself until this happened. Mm. And he really talked, and as did Brian Graves, uh, about the extraordinary capabilities of these craft, um, you know, uh, and all things that, in fact, if you look at contacts with the gods from space, you'll find a whole section in that book detailing some of the capabilities. Right. Uh, and some of those capabilities have been discovered quite recently, such as, for example, uh, breaking the sound barrier without emitting a sonic boom, mm. a sig which is called, they call signature control, mm. um, massive control over gravity. Uh, leaving, uh, traveling at vast speeds, you know, very, very fast acceleration, which no craft on Earth, no technology on Earth could remotely duplicate. And even down to mind reading. One of the interesting things actually that came out was a case, and it was brought up by one of the congressmen actually, of a craft being disarmed, a, 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 oh, yeah. Earth, a, an American craft being yeah. disarmed by a UFO. Now, I've come across this before. I brought some CIA papers to Britain mm. uh, in, in the very late, seven, I think, 79, oh, yeah, 80. Oh, yeah, I this case. Yeah. And it's published in my book. The whole paper's in my, in my book, uh, UFOs and the Extraterrestrial Message. It's quite well known now, if you look for it, but it wasn't then. And this also detailed an American jet chasing... A UFO, and this is a CIA paper uh, released under the Freedom of Information Act, and when and it was going to fire a missile at it, but when it got in range of the UFO, its missile control panel went dead. Mm. When it got out of range, its control panel was activated again. So it's a similar thing to what was uh, covered this week. Wow. Yeah, well, I think for me, you know, he, there was one question that really struck with me where he, he was asked by one of the congressmen about, um, you know, is it possible that this, that this craft that he witnessed could have come from any other nation on Earth? And he basically said no. Absolutely no. Yeah. Absolutely. And he yeah. said that there's a physics beyond the physics as we know it. Yeah. And of course it is because they are uh, able to travel through the dimensions mm. and th they can read minds. I mm. mean, there is one report, it didn't come out in this hearing, I don't mm. think, of a craft, uh, an, a UFO then, mm. let's call it, that yeah, yeah, UAP, sure, sure. whatever sure, you want to call sure. it. I just call it a craft, space craft. <laughs> yeah. um, reaching a destination that a US jet was headed for. Um, it, after being sighted, it went straight to the spot, the exact spot that that jet was, was heading for. So it knew where it was going and it got there first. Yeah. Showing <laughs> two abilities. That's got and, a And of course, they can, they, can, they can be, as they call it, transmedium. So they can go yeah. through water, yeah. air, space. I think the interesting about the transmedium is how fast they can travel underwater. I mean, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it, it, we yeah. have no explanation for how that could no. be possible now, no. not even And they don't have yeah. wings, which yeah. just, you know, to a, an Air Force person is. Yeah, and that even more so. So just aerodynamically, we have yeah. no explanation for how, I think it's called a bluff body shape, isn't it? Like yeah. a non-aerodynamically shape could even be, yeah. you know, could even travel through air in that way. I mean, And of course, the different shapes were predicted as well, or different types of craft were predicted by mm. the Master Ethereus. Mm. I think it was in 1970. I could have that year wrong, but in the early 70s, 
And he said there would be more craft coming into the solar system. Oh, did he? Uh, yes, he did. Uh, we're going to be allowed mm. in. Mm. And uh, we've had we've had triangular shapes. A lot of, whereas in the old days, it was always either t pretty much the so-called flying saucer uh, or it was the what they used to call the cigar-shaped object. I see, yeah. Now we have the Tic Tac and yeah. others. I thought, you know, None of them are good terms. They're no, pathetic they're not. Terms. <laughs> it's just, as you said before, the earthenware vessel, you know, yeah. going back to the Japanese yeah. terms. Yeah. But I think, um, you know, just, just re reviewing what Bruce shared there and Fravor and, and Graves, I thought it was interesting reading some articles online that they, they sort of like frame it as, you know, there's no smoking gun here at all for, for alien or extraterrestrial life. Mm -hmm. and I was like, it's like they're watching a different hearing, as far as I was concerned, given what they've actually said. I mean, mm. Um, you know, he, you know, Grush is saying that they've had this craft retrieval program, uh, and that they, he claims that there's these non-human biologics. I mean, Graves or oh, Fravor certainly is saying that there's no nation on Earth that would be capable of the kind of display performance of that craft that he saw. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes you can sort of give absolute evidence. I mean, somebody could walk in your house, and you could see them. And then somebody, if they were of that such a mind, yes, well, somebody came in my house, but I've actually got no proof that they came in. Okay. It's almost that, you know, yes. it's, uh, yeah. it's right staring them in the face. Anyone yeah. with common sense now yeah. Yeah. knows there are extraterrestrial spacecraft visiting us. Yeah. I think I'd go one step further and deal with this key point of them being friendly, which is yeah. key to the Ethereum Society and mm. key to the Spiritual Freedom Show. Mm. Of course they're friendly. Mm. I think Mars Sector 6 put it brilliantly. He said, if we weren't, you wouldn't exist. Mm. And it's such a nonsense. And then the idea they're going to, you know, having admitted this superior technology, which we can't begin to understand, and we can't really, okay, they say they're, you know, they're trying to do reverse engineering, but they haven't come up with anything, mm. uh, you know, uh, they, that, as though we could defend ourselves if they did attack us. Mm. And they aren't, you know, hard. there's these cases of disarming, not to be hostile, just to stop us being hostile. Yeah. To, you know, not... For our sake, more yes, than theirs. Yes, yeah. um, obviously, they're friendly. Mm. Uh, so the question is, what will people now do about it? And I believe the whole thing is designed to get people to look for those people who have genuine contacts. And there isn't a track record like ours here, the yeah. Ethereum Society. Yeah, because I think that brings up a good point because, you know, basically the bottom line is the significance of this hearing is, is, is not that we're learning about UFOs or evidence mm. for them for the first time because, as you say, we've been talking about this for, for more than 60 years. Um, we have the teachings that have been given by these extraterrestrial terms like Mars Sector 6 and Mars Theorists and others. But it, I, I think it's like, um, it's just that the U.S. government for the first time, as far as we know, is finally, well, agents within it, mm. I guess, or, or whistleblowers, let's put it that way, are finally coming forward in a more official capacity Capacity to share this truth which has been suppressed for so long. I yeah, mean, I, think I mean, you know what, what it would be like? Yeah. It just occurred to me now. It'd be like, as some viewers hopefully will know, but some mm. may not, that's fine. The Bhagavad Gita mm. is one of the greatest philosophical, spiritual doctrines from ancient times. Mm. It was delivered by Sri Krishna in a chariot driven by Arjuna. Mm. And it would be rather like that chariot arriving and being spotted, being filmed, being noted uh, as the Bhagavad Gita was being delivered. And the only interest of the government and the population of Earth was the nature of the chariot. Yes, that is exactly what's going on. <laughs> That's, That's where exactly we're at, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. Uh, and, and the actual being inside it, Sri Krishna, God-like being, and his great wisdom completely ignored mm. and that's what is required people want people to look at the beings inside them that's what the i believe the the extraterrestrials want the so-called aliens want is for us to the world to wake up and say okay they've got craft now who are they yeah. and what are they saying and for that you need to go to someone who's made contact I think that goes back to you know a point you made earlier about why have governments been suppressing the truth? Why don't we talk yeah. about that for a moment? Yeah, well, you know that as we've discussed before, I think goes into the deep state. It even goes into the dark forces. And if you go, I think a lot of people are pawns. Mm. A lot of people have just a natural resistance. I've come across this in the media, certain people, and not always, though. I've mm. had very good interviews lately in the media on the whole. But there are some people who, for no particular reason, they just don't like it. They just mm. don't want it, maybe because of their religious beliefs, maybe because of their scientific beliefs, because both can be dogmas. 
mm. that people are attached Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but there is that. But underlying it, those real manipulators behind the scenes, they don't want people, and Mars Sector 6 did answer this as well, because we're always being asked, why you know, why are they here? Yeah. And uh, why are governments suppressing this? And why are the powers that be trying to stop us getting this knowledge? Exactly, yeah. And he answered that. He basically said, because they don't want the world to look to the extraterrestrial beings rather than to the governments. See, the dark forces can manipulate the governments, and they're doing it fairly effectively, yeah. I mean, not hopefully all the time. And, and let's balance this by saying there are forces of light as Absolutely. well. And mm. that's why we're able to talk about this mm. at all, because mm. um, otherwise we wouldn't be. But the dark forces, they know about this. And as soon as human beings, if human beings start to look to otherworldly intelligences, great spiritual intelligences like Jesus, like Buddha, like Sri Krishna, this is the caliber of these intelligences. Yeah. They don't want that. And so they don't want people to know. They, and then people will just still be the prisoners of their governments. And, 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 you know, I remember the time when if you said governments are lying, you were regarded as a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really shifted, which is a good thing. Totally. I think that's, that's an aspect of this awakening, isn't it? Yeah. But, but certainly, you know, just, just come back to your point about these spiritual teachings coming from other planets. I mean, that is the, the seed of the awakening of humanity's that's consciousness. That's what's wanted. That's yeah. what's required. Yeah. And if people really did wake up and say, okay, then, okay. They're friendly. Let's go by this. They're real. They're friendly. They're extraterrestrials. The governments know it. They're not dealing with it. The governments aren't giving us any answers. They probably can't because they probably don't know. If they do know, they don't want us to know. So forget the governments. So let's look elsewhere. Let's really try and find out. Let's look at some of the people who claim these things. A lot of it's nonsense. I'll tell you right now. Mm. A lot of the claims are false. Not always deliberately. But they are, but they're not all. Look at them, the real ones, and I don't know any, any, even that comes close in its content to that of Dr. George King. And I think that brings us right back to the Nine Freedoms. It certainly does. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's Darren here. Thanks for tuning into the show. Now, if you enjoyed that episode, don't forget to subscribe for more wisdom from the Nine Freedoms. If you'd like to find out more about the Nine Freedoms, about Mars Sector 6 by Dr. George King, go to our website, that's ethereus.org. Richard and I love hearing from you, receiving your comments, your questions, and your spiritual experiences, and talking about them on the show. So do write to us, share them with us at spiritualfreedom at richardlawrence.co.uk. Always remember that service is the jewel in the rock of attainment. See you next time.